At 5 a.m. Iran time, drones struck an Iran Air Force base in Isfahan. Now, Isfahan is a city that's 441 kilometers south of Tehran. The province has Iran's, Natanz, nuclear research facility. Iran has not claimed responsibility for the attack. But this attack is being seen as a reprisal for last Saturday's attack where Iran shot over 300 missiles and drones at Israel. Now, Iran has downplayed the damage to its military facilities and it's outright denied that any of its nuclear facilities were attacked. However, will this escalate the conflict? Iran and Israel have waged a shadow war for decades. How will these rounds of direct strikes and counter strikes end? Joining me to discuss this today are General Rameshwar Yadav, former DG Infantry, and my colleague Aditya Rajkol. Aditya, it's very interesting that just 24 hours ago we were sitting here and discussing how Iran would uh, be hit by Israel. That the fact that it was not a question of when, uh, not if, but when it would attack. Any surprises that uh, the attack in Iran has just unfolded just a few hours after we discussed it? You know, not really surprising because we were expecting retaliation. I think we had an agreement yesterday yes. among all the guests right. on the show that there will be a retaliation. When and what will be the retaliation is something that we'll have to wait and watch. Right. In this case, I think the retaliation has happened and there's a face saving for both Iran and Israel. Right. Right. But it is not a kind of a retaliation which will widen the scope of the conflict to the entire region. Right. We discussed this threadbare yesterday yes, as well. Yes. If it was a direct attack on a nuclear facility, right. if civilians were harmed, if a military infrastructure uh, of uh, you know Iranian origin was destroyed completely, right. then this would have escalated certainly. Right. But remember, both the United States and several Western countries are in touch with Israel yes. as well as Iran. And both are trying to, you know, save face yes. and do not want this to escalate right. beyond the proxies and beyond what is happening in Gaza right now. Right. We also saw in the last 24 hours a veto happening in the United Nations Security Council where yes. in the UNGA where, of course, the full membership of the Palestine was denied only right. because of the veto of the United States. Absolutely. Twelve members had voted in favor right. of Palestine there. Right. So there is some give and take that is happening. There is yes. immense U.S. pressure. As of now, the Gaza military campaign of Israel will yes. only continue. There are 140 right. hostages. Who knows who might have already died. Yes. But I do not see an escalation, a direct escalation between right. Iran and Israel. Instead, what will they return to is yes. the proxies method. And of course, the proxies, Hezbollah, uh, the, of course, the Hamas yes. and others in the region will be attacking Israel. So a return to the covert war is what you're suggesting, which, yes. which is the kind of war that Iran and Israel have been fighting for uh, close to four decades now. General Yadav, do you see this attack as giving uh, what Aditya just said, that a face saver for both Iran and Israel? The fact that Israel seems to have attacked Iran, it's not claimed credit for this attack. Iranians are rattled. They've made a lot of noises saying that there will be a uh, retaliation. Do you see this as, uh, you know, an honorable exit now that both sides can call it quits, one all and then move on with their covert war? I look at it a little differently. Of course, I'm in agreement with what he has said. You see, it is a very deliberate and very well calibrated game plan that is going on by U.S. and Israel combined yes. against Iran. You see, the Israel has drawn Iran very smartly into the battle, directly now. Right. So far, Iran has been playing up their proxies. Now, yes. now Iran, Israel has drawn them in directly one-to-one -one battle. And right. by doing so, they have created an opportunity to uh, change the perception of Iran as an aggressor instead of Israel being an aggressor. That is right. the point. Right. Having done that, now with this kind of a strike, yes. now they're trying to convey a political military uh, message to Iran, thereby saying we are going to degrade your military capabilities right. so that do not harass uh, Israel and right. uh, carry out anti-Israeli activities. That is first part. It also seems to be have objective to neutralize the Iranian proxies engaging right. in anti-Israel uh, activities because now this war was all about Iran from the very beginning. It yes. was not Hamas actually. So Iran is the ultimate target of U.S. and Israel combined and they right. want to fit this new sense once for all. Right. Now this, this is how 
the entire game plan is being stage managed so as to draw them directly and yes. convey a very very, very important point there, General Yadav. The fact that, uh, you know, Aditya, the, as General Yadav mentioned, that it's a ploy by Israel to draw ir Iran directly into the conflict, to paint Iran as an aggressor. As of now, it was a backstage actor. It was behind the scenes. It's operating its uh, proxies, the three H's, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis. But how does this change this proxy war? Will it be of the same level that it was pre-April 1st? Or will there be another escalation, something else that we've not seen before? Well, we might see other escalations, diplomatic and military, uh, because in Gaza, of course, Israel has an upper hand. IDF has created inroads and gathered most of the territory uh, and the Rafah operation would be uh, certainly underway. Right. On the other hand, in Hezbollah, northern Israel, of course, the Hezbollah is a target. Right. And I think uh, Hezbollah is much more armed still. Yes. Uh, they have a lot of supplies still coming in. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the proxies will continue to engage Israel and that will continue. Of course, this is a very smart move to engage uh, directly with Iran. Right. But I don't see this continuing for a very long time. Right. Uh, because, as I said, that this is a phase saving, you know, there are 300 to 350 projectiles that yes. Iranians sent out to Israel. Uh, but there was hardly one person who was injured, one child right. that was injured. Right. And there wasn't much damage, even though uh, the Israeli narrative is that, you know, this yes. could have been a big, big major attack and, you know, destruction could be carried out. Right. But, <coughs> but what I see as of now is an escalation on the level of the proxies, not a direct uh, escalation. And that's what the US and the other Western allies right. were trying to avoid at this stage. They, they didn't want a full out, all out conventional war between Israel and Iran. Uh, assuming there could be one, given the vast uh, geography that separates them of over 1400 kilometers. It's, uh, I don't think there's a precedent for this where two countries that are so disparate, they're so uh, separated by geography, at least two countries between Israel and uh, Iran, but they seem to uh, not have made a difference when it comes to striking each other, either through cruise or ballistic missiles In fact, or drones. We were discussing this yesterday, yes. that one of the nuclear facilities or some enrichment site could be a target. Right. And that's what has happened. In, in this particular area, the map really describes yes. where it exactly happened. But I also hear that Israel had given an assurance to the yes. US that there will not be a direct attack on right. any nuclear facility. And that's right. when, uh, you know, a notum was issued. Yes. Even the Air India has come out with a statement now that it will not be flying in that yes. region for the next yeah. 48 to 72 Right, hours. absolutely. And there's a number of flights. In fact, it's a very interesting pattern that... Uh, we can see there with the number of flights that are diverted that immediately tells you which is the area that they're trying to avoid yes. uh, you know and uh, Iran obviously a no-fly zone because everyone anticipated uh, retaliation from Israel but you know General Yadav uh, Isfahan is an interesting place that over the last four years we've heard a series of reports from the Iranian media of attempts mysterious blasts exactly a year back in fact in January 28th, to be precise, a series of micro drones struck an um, ammunition facility in Isfahan. There were blasts at night. No one was, uh, uh, no one owned up responsibility for this. Then a couple of uh, months later, there was a case of some uh, Kurdish militants who had been uh, hired to, according to the Iranian security agencies, hired to carry out attacks inside Isfahan. Why is Isfahan so important? to uh, Iran and what makes it a target for such covert action? You see, Iran has got a uranium enriching facility that they have and right. tomorrow, in case Iran produces a nuclear bomb, the enrichment facility is here. So this is the mother of entire nuclear program what right. Iran has. Yes. So that's where the importance is. And even now the Israeli, uh, the so-called explosion by them in uh, near their airways, and not away, little away from this nuclear facility. Israel is trying to convey a message to Iran, like, look, we have capability to hit your nuclear facilities. No, yes. we are not doing it right. like they are promised the US. You see, it is a very big diplomatic and very well calibrated game that right. is going on. Yes. And the target is very simple. You see, as you have said, Iran and Israel, they do not share a common border. Right. And Iran has 
got uh, as far as military capabilities are concerned in terms of the numbers unless until there is a contact battle it yes. has got the aerial bombardment missiles drone they do not have much of meaning when the two nations are at war right. unless until you have capability to hold the ground and to bring the enemy to the negotiating table in absolutely where infantry until in infantry the enters the uh, thing where the queen of the battle enters See, there is no is war the situation it is it is not happening between iran and israel yes so it is going to be only air battle right Wherein israel and us have got superiority yes and otherwise over other uh, facets uh, land warfare uh, uh, over land sea space and cyber Everywhere Israel has got upper hand. Yes. So Israel, Iran also knows they have realized. Look, they are fighting a losing battle. Right. That's the reason they are sending signals of reconciliation after the strike of 300 missiles. Yes. They said our uh, uh, job is finished. Mission so accomplished. Yes. Message. Right. There's another point. There's another very important point I want to inject. You see, if you look at the sectarian war between Shias and Sunnis. Yes. The Sunni nations they have they are on board with Israel as part of the Abraham Accord. Right. You see, so Saudi uh, UAE is there, Bahrain is there. Now Saudi Arabia is known to have reconciled. It is a matter of uh, formalities only. So it is the political economic compulsions which are driving the national interest of all the Islamic countries which right. are surrounding Israel. Right. So they, it is a very defining moment, and in this defining moment, Israel yes. and US. and probably are trying to degrade the military capabilities of Iran that is right. part having done that they will reduce the strength and the, uh, and the capabilities of their proxy groups that, that is HQ by I call it Hamas Hezbollah and Houthis right. even they will also come down in case the Iran reconciles and in a time has come when Iran has to uh, reconcile to the political economic compulsion they cannot carry on the religious narrative altogether yes. the economy is in doldrums their right. oil is not being sold now the fresh sanctions are being imposed on them yes. so for their own survival it is a political compulsion for them but right. they would like to reconcile from a position of strength Absolutely. so they are looking for a window where they can dictate their terms and israel is also looking at the window where they can fire the shot from the position of strength fire the shots from a position of strength indeed Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, General Yadav. You know, uh, uh, you've summed it up beautifully. Shots are being fired between Israel and Iran. Israel has struck back for that attack by Iran, but fortunately, there's been no loss of lives, and that is hope for regional peace. Because may, you know, there's a lot of signalling that's going on between Israel and Iran, and uh, one hopes that you know better sense prevails in both the capitals and both sides. Call it quits. Uh, they uh, score their they've scored their respective brownie points, and now they can move on with it. But thank you very much, General Yadav, Aditya, for joining us this evening to talk about Israel's retaliation, and hopefully this would be the last round of the ongoing Israel-Iran battle. Streaming on News Nine Plus. News is now content. Subscribe and get free vouchers.